first thing we're going to look at as we investigate rational numbers are terminating and repeating decimals. So first we need to define what is a rational number. And a rational number is going to be any number that we can write as a fraction. You may recognize the word ratio in rational number because a ratio is also a number that can be expressed as a fraction. Uh, so you are correct if you recognize ratio in there. Um, so I've done some examples of rational numbers. Uh, whole numbers can be written as a fraction by putting it over 1. A negative whole number could also be written as a fraction over 1. So both positive and negative whole numbers are rational numbers. Uh, a fraction, even though it's negative, is already expressed as a fraction, so that certainly is a rational number. As well as a mixed number, you could change it to an improper fraction, but I would already say that this is in a fraction form. Okay, and a decimal, some decimals can be expressed uh, in a fraction form, not all decimals will be able to. So some examples of irrational numbers then would be uh, any number that we actually express more commonly as a symbol. Something like pi uh, which is a short way of expressing the number 3.14159 uh, and it just continues on forever. There is no way to represent this as a fraction. There are some fractions that get close. Uh, often you will see pi represented as 22 over 7. However, well, let's try and get the glare off there. There you go. 22 over 7. However, this is not an exact uh, equivalency to pi. It's just an approximation. Okay, so um, there are other irrational numbers. Pi is the only one we're really going to use this year at all. Um, but for now, we're going to talk about numbers that can be expressed as a fraction. So you can see my decimals that I chose. Uh, one and 25 hundredths is one and a quarter, or one and one fourth. Uh, and negative 11 and 3 tenths repeating uh, would be expressed as a fraction as negative 11 and 1 the reason it's not expressed as three-tenths is because this is bar notation that indicates uh, that it does repeat. It would be negative 11.3333333 forever. Okay, um, so in this uh, lesson, or these two lessons from sixth grade and seventh grade, uh, we need to look at how to write a fraction as a decimal, how to convert that, and whether or not that decimal is going to be terminating or repeating. Repeating would be like uh, this example that would continue on forever, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Terminating just means to end. So this decimal ends. It does not go on forever. So I would say that this is a terminating decimal. Okay, so for my first example, I'm going to look at the fraction 1 fourth. Okay, and with one-fourth, I'm just going to uh, divide my numerator by my denominator in order to determine this fraction, or uh, in decimal form. This is one of the most common fractions that you will see, and it's one of the ones that you might memorize how to change into a decimal. And if you have that memorized, uh, you wouldn't have to do this work. However, I'm going to show you just so for more complicated ones, you would know the procedure. Okay, so one-fourth, we've discussed before, we could write this one-fourth, where this is both a fraction bar, but it could also be a division symbol, which means I'm dividing one by four. And in order to set this up as long division, we need to remember that my divisor goes on the outside in my long division problem, and my one is what goes underneath that long division symbol. So I have how many times does 4 go into 1? And a good trick for changing a fraction to a decimal. I always know that if my fraction is less than 1, 
my decimal will be less than one. It's always going to be zero point something. So I always start these problems just by adding or annexing those zeros. And I might need to use them, I might not, but having them there from the beginning of the problem ensures that I don't make any silly mistakes along the way. Okay, so now I have four does not go into one. I need to make sure to bring my decimal point up into my quotient or my answer. Four is gonna go into 10 two times. And I have two left over, so I'm gonna bring down one of those zeros I annexed. Four is gonna go into 20 five times with a zero remainder. So I can see that I have changed one fourth into the decimal 25 hundredths. So I'm gonna go ahead and say one fourth equals 25 hundredths. And I'm just gonna make a note that this is a terminating decimal because it does indeed come to an end and I end up with a zero remainder. So it terminates. If you end up with a decimal that does not terminate, we will use bar notation to indicate that the decimal is repeating, to show that this problem would indeed go on forever. Okay, in this example, um, I have a whole number here. Uh, with this whole number, and I'll be writing this as a note later, um, with this whole number, it's just going to stay a whole number in my answer. I know that this, this is two and one sixth. It means two plus a little bit extra, which means as a decimal, it's still two plus a little bit extra, whatever one sixth equals as a decimal. So I can go ahead and already set up in my answer that two and one sixth equals, it's going to equal two point something I'm just not sure what that something is yet. Okay, so starting it the same way here, I'm gonna go ahead and say, all I need to worry about now is the fraction. Oh, let's see if we can. There we go. So all I need to worry about is the fraction. So I'm gonna do one divided by six. Uh, so setting that up as long division, I'm gonna say how many times does six go into one? Six is my divisor. I'm gonna go ahead and annex those zeros just to make my life easy later. And you can annex a different number of zeros each time. That's irrelevant. I did four here, I did five here. I normally do between four and six just to start off with. Sometimes I need more, sometimes I don't use them all. Like in this one, I didn't use them, that's fine. Okay, six is not gonna go into one. I know I'm on the right track because I started out with a decimal less than one. And my fraction, I know this number is greater than two, but I ignored the whole number. My fraction is less than one, my decimal should be less than one. Okay, six is gonna go into 46 times. Bring down another zero that I had annexed. Six is gonna go into 46 times still. I have a 40 remainder again. I can see that I would just keep getting the same remainder over and over again. The rule of thumb for repeating decimals is make sure that it repeats three times and make sure that every time you're getting the same remainder. I got 40 after I annexed a zero, or uh, brought down my zero. I got 40 again, I got 40 again. If I brought down a zero, I would get 40 again. I can confirm that nothing will ever change about the remainder that I'm getting. It will continue to be 40 minus 36 is four, bring down a zero, minus 36 is four minus three. Okay, once you see that it does repeat three times in your work, I can say that this number is not zero, I had two holes, so two point, and what's my decimal? One, six, 
the six is repeating, so the bar for bar notation only goes over the six. This is like saying I'm copy pasting this six over and over and over again. If the bar was over the one and the six, this number repeating would be 2.161616116. That's not what I want to repeat. I only want that six repeating. And I'm just going to write a note that this would be a repeating decimal. And you don't really have to make this note every time, especially because if I see that bar, I know that implies that it's repeating. Okay, so let's look at some more examples. Okay, a negative fraction is going to be a negative decimal. So if I have a negative fraction, all I'm doing is saying this number, I want the same exact number. I'm not changing the point that it's at on the number line. Uh, I just want to, instead of writing it as a fraction, write it as a decimal. So I can go ahead and already write down. I know that negative 5 elevenths is going to equal negative, there's no whole number with it, so it's going to be negative 0 point something. I just need to figure out what 5 elevenths is as a decimal, so I can add it to negative 0 point whatever it is. So I'm just going to worry about 5 divided by 11, which means 11 is my divisor, 5 is my dividend. I'm going to go ahead and just annex a bunch of zeros, so I'm ready to go. Okay, 11 doesn't go into 5. I know I'm on the right track. I didn't accidentally switch those two. Bring up my decimal point. 11 goes into 5 four times. 11 goes into, oh, I'm sorry, 11 goes into 50 four times. Um, 11 is going to go into 65 times. Eleven's going to go into 50 four times. Eleven's going to go into 60 five times. Okay, and I can already see this pattern that's starting to form. Eleven goes into 50 four times. I just need to make sure that I do it three full cycles so I'm positive about the part that is repeating. Okay. And now I can see this pattern that has formed, and I see that the 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5 is what's repeating. So negative 0 point, the 4, 5, the bar goes over both of them because both of them were repeating. I'm going to have one last example I'm going to go ahead and look at then. So I know that if my number is negative, it's going to stay negative. Additionally, just like I already talked about, if it's a mixed number, the whole number is going to stay the same. It's still negative 3 and a little bit extra. I'm just rewriting that extra in decimal form instead of in fraction form. Okay, so I already know negative 3 and 4 ninths is going to be equal to negative 3 point something. The negative stays, the whole number stays. I just need to change my little bit extra into a decimal. So I'm going to go ahead and do 4 divided by 9, which means 9 is my divisor and 4 is my dividend. Annex those zeros to begin with. Okay, 9 does not go into 4. I can tell that I'm on the right track bring my decimal point up. 9 goes into 40 four times. 9 goes into 40 four times. 9 goes into 40 four times. Okay, so I've, I've confirmed that my decimal is indeed repeating. I could keep solving this, uh, but instead I'm going to go ahead and uh, say, since I've seen it three times, that Three, negative 3 and 4 ninths is equal to negative 3 and 4 tenths repeating. 